end-to-end -end encrypted WebEx meetings. That's going to be today's topic. And guys, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you like today's content, give it a thumbs up. So in today's episode, what we're going to talk about is how to enable end-to-end -end encryption via WebEx. And before we get into that, and I am going to show you guys how to do it on the back end, what you need to click to get that to work and how to set it up for the end user. Let's quickly talk about the default behavior of WebEx because there is encryption. There is AES-256 encryption throughout WebEx when you're just typically doing it normally. What we do is, or what Cisco does, is they encrypt from the end user's PC all the way through the internet back to the WebEx data centers. And the only time that it's really decrypted is if we need to do something to that information that's coming back. So one person might have joined on voice over IP audio, another person might have joined over PSTN audio to the same meeting, and we need to kind of mux those technologies together and do some, and do some transcoding. So when those streams get back to that server, that's where we'll have to decrypt and we'll have to do that. Another couple of use cases is if you need to record the meeting. I click that record button, I need to bring in a recorder to that meeting, and that meeting needs to be recorded and needs to be decrypted for that as well. And then same thing goes for video devices. I might have a Polycom or a Cisco telepresence device. If I want to bring those into the meeting, we need to decrypt that content, mux it all together, and then send it out. But as soon as we send out that information, it is, again, 100% AES-256 encrypted, and you have full encryption all the way through the internet directly to the end user's PC. So if you still want to enable end-to-end -end encryption, and, and you can, and you could do it per meeting, and it's really simple and it's really easy to do, and I'll show you guys what that looks like, um, just be aware that when you are doing the end-to-end -end encryption, there are a couple limitations. One, you won't be able to do it on personal meeting rooms. Uh, two, join before host. That option's not available for you. Video devices, we kind of talked about that. You won't be able to bring those in. Um, you, your only option is to use the WebEx app too. You can't use the web application if you're going to use it in Chrome or Safari. You can't do that. Linux clients are not supported. Network-based recording, talked about that. That's not supported. WebEx Assistant, again, not supported in there. Uh, saving session, data scripts, meeting notes, those types of things, again, not supported. And then the last one, PSTN call-in, callback functionality, no PSTN access is, is allowed in these types of meetings because, again, we need to do that transcoding. We need to decrypt the data. We need to put, bring those streams in. So, so, guys, with that, let's jump in. Let's show you guys how to enable it on the back end and, and for the users. So to start, just log into your WebEx admin page here. I'm in Control Hub. And we're going to go over to Services, Meeting Sites, select our site, and go to Configure Site. Then once this loads up here, we're going to go under session types under the common settings. And we're going to scroll down and we are going to look for pro end to end encryption VoIP only. So some people may not see this. If you don't have this as an option, what you're going to want to do is contact your CSM, your customer success manager for WebEx, and they can go ahead and they can enable this, this option for you. Uh, if you don't know who that person is, reach out to your Cisco account manager or your SE, and they can point you into the right direction. Or you could probably open up a case with WebEx2, and that would work for you. So really, if you've got this option here, uh, you know, it should be checked automatically, and it should be an option for, for your end users, but we have to do end user configuration to get this to work. I also went in here just to show you how you can modify the sessions a little bit and you can do things like disable video when you're in an encrypted meeting and you might want a couple of these like in some meetings that we're doing end-to-end -end encryption video is okay but other meetings i don't want video because you know i'm in a top secret bunker and i don't know who's going to be looking over the person's shoulder that i'm talking to and i don't want them to see the secret codes on, on the back wall you know who knows but you guys you have that option so you can create additional um, sessions here by clicking on the add session down below here. Now, interesting thing I found out, once you add one, you can't delete it. You can just deactivate it so it's no longer an option, uh, but you can't actually delete it out of the list. You can rename it if you screwed up the name or something, but you just can't remove it. So to add a new session, either click add session here or just go in and modify the one that I already created. 
And then here's all the cool stuff that you can disable or enable in here. And I'm gonna go down to the bottom here and you can see that video right here for this one I actually disabled because again, I don't want people on video. I don't want people to see what's behind me when I'm doing these top secret encrypted meetings. Go ahead and click update there. Then you should be all set. Make sure that those boxes are all checked and then we're gonna go over to users. And once you're under users, you're going to go ahead and you're going to select the user that you want to enable this for. There are bulk ways of doing this if you want to enable this for multiple users. I'll post a link in the description going over the bulk import process. But click on the person. You're going to go to meetings right here. You're going to click on the site. And once that loads, now you have all these, uh, these meeting center options here. Uh, by default, these won't be checked, so you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to enable them. So for me, and I'll enable both just so you can see how they appear in the dropdown, but we'll go ahead and we'll enable these two options there. That's what we just created, those session types, and we'll click Save. So once you have that set for your users, now it's your user's turn. They can go in and they can create their end-to-end -end encrypted meetings. They can do it with the Outlook plugin if they wanted to. They could also do it uh, through the web page if that's how they're scheduling meetings. I'll do it through Outlook because I think that's how most people end up scheduling these things. But we can just pick a random day here. So Tuesday the 29th at 1 o'clock in the morning. We'll double click. We can set a subject here like we normally would and a location, WebEx. And then all we need to do is go to the top here and add WebEx meeting. Again, shouldn't be anything crazy. If you guys are scheduling WebEx meetings, you, you should know how to do this. We do need to go in and we do need to change the settings here. And this is where we wanna select our end-to-end -end encryption. So I need to go to show advanced settings. And then under that, I wanna go to meeting type. In meeting type, this is where I want to select my encryption. So I've got my pro end-to-end -end encryption meeting right there. And then that other one that we called test, you probably should put in there and then encrypt it so the person knows. But I can select that. And it's going to automatically default to VoIP only because we talked about it before, the limitations in here. You can only do VoIP audio. And then you click OK. And then go ahead, send this out just like you normally would and then you're ready to join the meeting. So then at the time of the meeting, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna click on that join meeting button. You'll notice in the invitation now, there is no PSTN options. There's really nothing in here, just the join meeting button. And go ahead and click that, and it will cross launch the WebEx app. You could start, you could see that there's no video option, because again, we disabled that in ours. And now I'm in the meeting with my headset, showing that I'm on a voice over IP, and that's it. So guys, not really hard to do. You know, again, I could see this being useful in a lot of situations where, hey, this is really super top secret. We just wanna make sure with everything, end-to-end -end encryption, I wanna shut video off. That's how you do it. So guys, hope you get, hope again you like this video. If you guys have any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And thanks a lot.